HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On today's edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Freedom Team talks about their active bystander training event. We'll fill you in on Saturday's Hopkinton Town Election, and we have the latest Hiller Spring Sports Highlights. But first, Health Director Sean McAuliffe had a very positive health update. Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe recently gave a health update on our Hangout Hour program. About the CDC, you know, do we wear masks, do we not wear masks? We're getting to that point in Hopkinton where I, I'm actually okay with everything that the governor's about to do. I mean, we're, you know, for those who well, haven't heard and will definitely hear, Later tonight, uh, Massachusetts will be, for the, for all intents and purposes, opened up on uh, May 29th. So um, there'll be a few exceptions where, you know, face coverings will be required, but um, all other restrictions are going to be lifted. And then come June 15th, the uh, emergency declaration will be lifted. So, um, and a bills. lot of- Get in all your bills in now before- <laughs> No, I mean, I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm sitting there looking at, I'm sitting on all this grant money that I got to, yeah. <laughs> to uh, figure out what I need. Um, but, you know, so what does that mean for Hopkinton? I mean, it means that, you know, all of the businesses, and I've been, I've been in touch with a bunch of them today, um, you know, they should start making plans to open up, figure out what, you know, their their return to a normal operation is going to look like. Because as we were discussing, you know, they have the right to require face coverings and to set up, you know, uh, protocols um, that are a little more, you know, that are more stringent if they aren't fully comfortable with opening up. Um, and that's one of the things that the governor and the secretary were stating today. You know, we were, were allowed to open up, but um, we need to be, our, you know, we need to respect, you know, businesses' decisions, you know, as, as we are going through this process. Right. And, um, absolutely. Because they, they did mention that we're not going to have any kind of unvaccinated ID card, you know, proof of no, ID, no. this and, and, but, there are still people that, you know, found a new way, and I will go into the service industry. They found a new way to serve the public uh, during this pandemic. And like you and me, we got some ideas of, you know, having to be creative in this time. And we got the ideas and there's some things that we're going to stick with. And mask could be one of them. They yeah. may want... You may see this service with the mask all the time. You may see service with gloves all the time. Uh, they may ask you, hey, you know, we or we may limit the tables to six, though. You know, stuff like that yeah. that, they, that they had to adapt to. So you got to respect it. You know, the, let's put it this way. I've never seen so many signs in, in one place at any time. It, it's just incredible. And you know, some people, oh, I still forget my mask. I mean, come on, it's been a year, you know. Yeah. I can no, potty no. train it, I can potty train the dog best, you know. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's but these people still want to have their mask and they're gonna expect you to do it. So you're not gonna get rid of those masks yet. No, and, and the, it's funny because like I, I've been you know, when someone asked me, you know, what the last year has been like, I, you know, it's 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 this interesting story, and then when I get around to this time i'm like and people are, i'm finding people are just at their wits at they're at their end and you know they're they're 
fighting me on everything. And I have one who has been writing me weekly about face coverings. And, and I'm like, but you, you can't argue with, you know, the data, you know, if you look at just the municipal offices, we've had the lowest rate of absenteeism ever. Um, when I look at the school data or the town data, we have the lowest rate of, um, aside from COVID, respiratory illnesses. So flu, the common cold, um, you know, things like norovirus, all of the things that you would get, especially in the school setting. Um, it just, we haven't seen that this year. Right. So, right. I, I mean, I personally think that there is a place for face coverings in the schools and they will still be required in the schools. Sure. Um, but, you know, these are the things to, you know, to consider maybe during cold and flu season, um, people might want to wear a face covering. Right now, um, the funny thing today was my, when my daughters took their face coverings off um, and they were exposed to the pine pollen, and they started uh, sneezing. Right. And I said, well, until the allergy medicine takes effect, maybe you want to put the face covering on. And, and then they stopped sneezing. So, you know, it, we learned a lot this year. So, I, I mean, I, I think like many others, I'm not a fan of wearing a face covering, but, you know, I didn't have any of the sinus infections I normally get. You know, I, I yeah. get my flu shot, so I didn't have any flu. Um, and uh, aside from being incredibly exhausted and in need of a long vacation, uh, you know, I'd say my, my family made out pretty well. <laughs> View the entire program on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. The Hopkinton Freedom Team recently filled us in on their active bystander event. Here's a look. The Hopkinton Freedom Team recently joined us on the Hangout Hour to talk about their active bystander training program. Let's start with you because I have been reading the word training uh, in relation to the Freedom Team. So let's talk about uh, what's coming up for, for training. Yeah, um, I think that this is really one of the more powerful and beneficial things that uh, our town can be doing right now. And, you know, especially in light of Michaela's death, when people have been asking us, what can I do? I think this is something that um, really can benefit all of us. Um, it can not only empower us to be able to act as an active bystander when we witness or are the target of some sort of bias, um, but we can also stand up for others and we can also learn to listen very deeply and um, show much greater understanding and empathy and try to repair some of the division that has been occurring in our community for a very long time. And okay, let's let's start with that because I have actually heard that phrase before, but in case someone hasn't, there's an what is the definition of an active bystander? Anyone? Um, yeah, anyone can answer that one. <laughs> All right, Sarah, you want to jump in on that? Uh-huh. Um well, I, I think it's, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, an active bystander would be somebody who is involved, has some uh, proximity um, to to a situation. Um, you know, I, I went through the training and I, I found it just super helpful uh, and useful and practical. Um, we, we broke out into little breakout rooms on Zoom and practiced responses of, of de-escalating, taking pauses, saying, hey, I was uncomfortable with that. Um, they let you uh, figure out kind of what your preferred verbiage is for, for saying things. Um, and it was just super helpful because you, you, you think, how many moments in life have we been in where you think, oh man, if I could just rewind, I would do it different. Well, one of the reasons why we don't do it different when we're, we're in the moment is because 
we haven't had any practice. And how many things in your life do you practice saying this is this is something that we it's really good to, to get that practice and support and do it in a safe environment with friends. So um, it was just really helpful to to have some of useful tools, useful things to say and practice saying that, hey, when you hear something that, you know, might be uh, hurtful or uh, not helpful, certainly, how can you react and respond well? Because um, I also think the reality is most of us will hear things that are not helpful, that are hurtful, and how do we respond well in that? So um, in a way that doesn't escalate or, or accuse. Um, so, and honestly, the training was also fun. It was fun to talk to other people. Um, they had great situations and scenarios um, that came from uh, the community. So um, I, I, that's, that's my perspective on being part of the training. It was great. Um, and a very quick answer to your uh, question about what an uh, active bystander is. The next session of the active bystander training program will take place on June 16th at 5.30 p.m. You can find more information at hopkintonfreedomteam.org. We are going to take a quick time out, but a whole lot more ahead. You're watching HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago and it's uh, persisted right to this this very moment um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of center school which honors team Hoyt uh, is, is going to be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick to me besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between a father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News. Right now, we have the latest Hopkinton Hillers spring sports highlights. Here's a look. On Friday, May 14th, the one and three Hiller girls lacrosse team took on Norwood. The Hillers rallied in the first quarter. Hillers rushes in, shot, and it's in. One nothing Hillers. Picked up by Dacey. Feeds it over to Catherine Dacey. You got Emma and Catherine Dacey both out there. Here comes the Hillers once again. Rushing in, shot, and it's in. Jamie Arena makes it two to nothing. York working her way up towards the doorstep. There's a shot and it's in. Three nothing Hillers. Behind the net over to Worrell. Worrell sneaks it over to McCullough. Shot in. What a great setup by Worrell there and a good score by Tiffany McCullough, her second goal of the day. Hopkinton scores six goals in the first quarter. They would take the win over Norwood 16-3 and improved to 2-3 and three on the season. On Monday, May 17th, Hiller Boys Lacrosse took on Holliston. The Hillers took the match 11 to 8 and improved to 1 and 3 on the season. Also on Monday, May 17th, Hillers softball took on Dover Sherborne. It was a scoreless game heading to the bottom of the first. And this is going to be up the left side. The throw home is going to get away from the catcher and the run will score. Way in on the corners and this pitch gets away from the catcher to throw home. Not in time, and another Hillers run scores. So Jurasek comes around on the wild pitch. 
Bragdon deals, and this is hit high in the air towards left field, and that drops, and the runner from third is going to score. Hillers played five runs in the inning. They ended up taking the game in a five-inning mercy, 12 to nothing to improve to 5-0 and oh on the season. Also May 17th, Hiller Baseball took on Dover Sherborne. The Blue Raiders led 2-1 heading to the bottom of the sixth. Hillers played seven runs in the bottom of the sixth and took the game 8-2. Hopkinton improves to 4-1 and one on the season. On Tuesday, May 18th, Hiller Baseball battled Ashland, trailing 1-0 Hiller's rally in the bottom of the first. When everybody... There's a base hit right up the middle. Pahara going to score easily. And Kelly is in there for an RBI single. Nice there's a base hit in the center field. In comes Kelly, Paharek to third, no, locked to third. He stops, puts the brakes on. Nice job by Matt Cooper, first and third. Ball in the dirt, pass ball. Here comes Lock, slides in safely. Here's a ground ball through the hole in between third and short. Here comes Jarrett to the plate, cut off. Nothing doing, throw down to second base. Andrew Gunn is safe. There's a ground ball beaten down the third baseline, picked up by the third baseman. And he has to eat it. Andrew Gunn scores. A 6-3, Hiller's lead heading into the bottom of the second. Connor Kelly steps to the plate. Before getting hooked by Coach Simos. There's a fly ball deep. That's going back to the fence, and it's gone. Connor Kelly. It's a bomb to right field. Little repeat of last night's action. Good power as we like to say here in this area. A solo shot. The home run makes it a 7-3 game. Hillers never look back. They took the win in a five-inning mercy, 13-3. Also on Tuesday, Hillers softball took on Ashland. Hillers trailed 3-1, heading in to the bottom of the second inning, but the bats got going. And the pitch gets a piece of this one, and that'll drop into left field. Here comes one run in to score. It's a three to two game, and Harrigan going to advance to second. And up in the pitch, and she rips this one into center field. That gets down, and we are knotted up at three apiece. And now DeSimone will advance to second. And she gets a good piece of this one. That'll drop into center field. And here comes one run to score, another runner right behind her, and here comes yet a third run, and that is a three RBI double by Katherine Morse. She clears the bases. Five runs score in the bottom of the second to make it a six to three game. Hillers add four more runs in the third. That's the deal. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll get down. Alex Young going to be waved around third. Here she comes to score. And now McCluskey continuing to third, and it's an RBI triple. Fouled away, and it got away from the catcher. And here comes a run to score, and the throw's off the mark. And this is hit in the air over to right center. That'll drop down for a hit. A run in to score. Here comes Kester over to second base. She's going to keep going to third. The throw, not in time. An RBI triple for Kester. And this is hit in the air to the wall, and that'll drop in front of the wall. Another run around to score. Morse heading to second, an RBI double. 
A 10-3 game, Hillers would add eight more runs in the fourth inning and end up taking the five-inning mercy win 18-3 over Ashland. Hillers improved to 6-0 on the season. The Hopkinton Annual Town Election takes place this Saturday, May 22nd. In the annual town election, there is one contested race, which is for school committee and four questions on the ballot as well. HCAM recently hosted a debate with the three candidates for school committee who are running for the two open seats. What is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Amanda, you can answer first. Thank you, uh, Tom, and thank you to HCAM for hosting this debate. Um, so the most effective, uh, the most important qualification, I would say, would be um, just being able to process a wide breadth of information, um, breadth and depth of information across many, many topics. Um, and to digest that information quickly and to pull out um, the relevant, uh, you know, sort of actionable um, points so that you can make decisions and, and guide the district forward. Um, you can imagine in a job that deals uh, sort of oversees a $54 million budget covering facilities and hiring and curriculum and special ed and mental health. Um, there's a breadth of topics that you really need to become conversant on quickly. So, um, I think it's important to be able to commit and do the work. I think um, that is something that I am actually, I, I like to do. I like to process information. Um, I, I like to do that analysis and I like to figure out um, sort of with a level head uh, where to go uh, with that information to, to help lead the district. All right, excellent. Uh, Meg, same question. What is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Let me now answer, Meg. Thank you, Tom. Um, one quality that I think is absolutely crucial is the ability to listen and then to integrate into your own thinking, opposing points of view. Um, you know, the, the five of us have very strong personalities on the school committee, and we have to talk a lot about about a lot of very sensitive topics and very important topics. Um, we don't always agree with each other, but I have learned so much from listening closely, especially to points of view that I don't agree with. Um, as you know, in the past year, we have struggled a lot with trying to decide what to do in the face of the pandemic, um, a particularly trying experience, I think, for all of us was being on the reopening full-time committee and listening to people who were so eager to get their kids back into school and people who were really fearful of that prospect too. And I think that we all have strong emotions. Um, whether we illustrate that or not, we have them. And I think part of listening well is learning not to react to how you're feeling in that moment, but to be able to acknowledge the feeling in yourself, but still try to synthesize the information. And as Amanda said, to remain level-headed. A lot of this is about listening, waiting, and then trying to do the right thing through the use of reason. All right, terrific. And Jared, uh, what is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Excellent. Thank you, Tom, for the question. So, you know, similar to Amanda, I think the most important quality is kind of the ability to, you know, intake, you know, understand and ultimately synthesize information. The one point I'd add to that is ultimately being comfortable making a decision and moving forward. You know, I think that there's a lot of information out there, you know, certainly now, whether it's, you know, sourced in so many different places, but I think it's so important that not only just listening, not only gathering all of that data, but ultimately being able to move forward decisively. Uh, and I think, you know, as we, 
you know, as we look about, look what's most important, I would think the, you know, that kind of paralysis, just sitting, waiting, I, I think it, you know, it, it's difficult, you know, it's difficult for the town, it's difficult for the students. Uh, and ultimately, I think it's difficult for progress and moving forward. You know, I, you know, career-wise, I, I work uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, um, which, you know, is, is an area that, you know, is, is filled. It's, you know, we literally live and die by data. Uh, so it's, it's so important that, you know, your ability, you're able to make a decision uh, with something like 60, 80% of the data, make a decision, move on, continue to learn more. You know, if you learn that last 10, 10 to 20%, you learn a little bit more, it's okay to change direction. It's okay to, you know, correct, change course a little bit, but ultimately to make a decision and move forward. Upcoming games for the Hopkinton Hillers on Monday, May 24th. Boys Lacrosse takes on Bellingham, a 4 p.m. start for that one. And on Tuesday, May 25th, Girls Lacrosse against Norton, a 4 p.m. start. And then right after Boys Lacrosse versus Ashland, a 6 p.m. start for that one. Then on Thursday, May 27th, Baseball and Softball versus Millis at 3.45 p.m. Upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts include Madeline Goes to the Circus, a Saturday event at 7 p.m. You can find all the upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts at hopartscenter.org. Our picture of the week, the Chamber of Commerce Hopkinton Restaurant Week kickoff. This picture is courtesy of Christine Strickland of the Hopkinton Independent, a number of business owners in town plus some members of the Chamber of Commerce. Upcoming town government meetings on Saturday, May 22nd, as we mentioned earlier, is the annual town election. Voting takes place 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Hopkinton Middle School. On Monday, May 24th at 7 p.m., the Zoning Advisory Committee. You can see that live on HCAM TV. Then on Tuesday, May 25th at 7 p.m., the Conservation Commission airing on HCAM TV. For all the listings of the town government meetings, head over to HopkintonMA.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, next Thursday we'll be back at 6.30 p.m. sharp. As always, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to you again soon. And stick around if you're watching on HCAM TV because coming up, it is a brand new episode of The Gathering with Hopkinton's favorite party planner and chef, Terry Malisi. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, everybody. Hey.